Hello everyone, my name is Zhang Fang, my major is Material Science and Engineering, this is my PhD course. My instructor for this class on trends in bioenergy technology is Saki P. Young. Today, I'm going to talk about the electrode-reducing microorganisms that harvest energy from marine sediments. My presentation consists of four parts, namely introduction, experimental conditions, growth process, experimental results. First, why harvest energy from marine sediments, and why reduce microbes with energy harvesting electrodes? 1. Since organic matter, stored in anoxic subsurface environments and in aquatic sediments, represents a huge potential source of energy. But most organic matter cannot be converted into useful energy with current technology. 2. To promote bioremediation of organic pollutants in subsurface environments. Next, we discuss how to obtain electrical current from anoxic marine sediments. We can obtain electrical current from anoxic marine sediments by embedding electrodes anode in the sediment and connecting them via electronic circuits to similar electrodes in the upper aerobic seawater cathode. So, what is the magnitude of the current drawn? Even with a simple unmodified graphite electrode, the magnitude of the current produced 0.01 watt per square meter is theoretically sufficient to power electronic instruments deployed at sea. Afterwards, how to assess the potential role of microorganisms in electron transfer to the anode, we constructed sediment batteries in laboratory aquariums using graphite anodes in anoxic marine sediments and graphite cathodes in upper aerobic water, and then comparing the microbial community attached to the anode with the community on the same control electrode. Next are the experimental conditions. The power output of these cells was continuous, averaging 0.016 watt per square meter of electrode surface area in three independent experiments over a six-month current acquisition period. These control electrodes have been placed in the same sediment for the same length of time, but are not electrically connected to the electrodes in the overlying water. And then, the microbial community on the electrode compares the results. Analysis of 16S ribosomal DNA genes showed only 17% of the 16S RDNA sequences from control electrodes belonged to the delta subgroup of proteobacteria, while 71.3% of the 16S RDNA sequences from microorganisms colonizing anodes of the current producing batteries were in this subgroup. Next, the growth process. The 70% increase in proteobacterial sequences is due to a single bacterial group in the Geobacteraceae family, a group of anaerobic microorganisms that combine the oxidation of organic compounds with the reduction of insoluble iron, 3, oxides. The organism most closely related to the sequence repeatedly enriched on the anode in pure culture is desulfur monoxacetooxidans, 
a marine species known to grow anaerobically by oxidizing acetate with concomitant reduction of elemental sulfur or iron. 3. Microorganism Then, the specific enrichment of microorganisms on the anode was further investigated. There are four experimental conditions. 1. Sediments were inoculated on the anoxic side of a two-chamber microbial cell. 2. Seawater is regularly replaced with fresh acetate-modified anoxic seawater. 3. Change the medium while supplementing with acetate. 4. After 85 days, the 16S RDNA sequences of bacteria attached to the anode were examined. Next is the experimental result. 1. Addition of acetate immediately produced a current of density 0.014 watt per square meter, comparable to that observed in sediment microbial cells. 2. Adding AQDS only increased current yield by 24%. 3. Killing the culture by heating to 65 degrees Celsius rapidly inhibits current production. Other researchers found that D acetoxidants conserves energy to support growth from electron transfer to the electrode, as evidenced by the increase in current and the growth of the organism over time. Figure 2 The increase in cellular protein is accompanied by acetate depletion and electron collection. In the absence of current acquisition, cultures containing electrodes and acetate did not grow. When it is considered that some acetate is required for cell biosynthesis, this finding demonstrates that D. Acetoxidants was growing because of acetate oxidation coupled to reduction of the electrode. When G. Metallorducens was seeded into a vessel containing benzoate as the electron donor and only the graphite electrode as the electron acceptor. A current was generated and benzoate was consumed. When a portion 10% of this culture was transferred to a new vessel containing only benzoate and electrodes, current generation and benzoate oxidation started again figure 3. In these experiments, benzoate was completely oxidized to CO2, and 84% of the electrons derived from benzoate oxidation were recovered with the electrode. In the end, I want to ask three questions about this article. One. What is the magnitude of the current that can be obtained from anoxic marine sediments, even using a simple unmodified graphite electrode? 2. When some acetate is thought to be required for cellular biosynthesis, this finding suggests that the growth of D-acetooxidants is due to a combination of what? 3. D-acetooxidants conserve energy to support growth from electron transfer to electrodes. What could prove this? That's all. Thanks for your watching.